In this video, we're going to focus on how we can move or position our bars to the very left, even if we have limited amount of bars being displayed. So to do this, the first thing what we need to do here is get the boiler template, which you can find here on chartcast3.com getting started. Once you're on here, copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, if you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page and of course, join the Discord channel. All of these links are in the description box. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to work on creating labels. We will have to make a few things. So first thing what I want to do here, because we have this bar here, and I want to make sure we push the bar to the left. So what I'm going to do here first, we're going to only select a single item here. Save that, refresh. Right now this works, but if you're not in favor of this, although this is not bad, honestly, this is a very simple uh, way to do it. We can do another way. We're just going to do it like this, save that, there we are. Now we only have one bar. How do we push this more to the left? I'm going to scroll down. And what I need to do here, first of all, is have some padding because later on we need to adjust the label as well. So I'm going to say here, layout, padding, and then we say here, bottom, and maybe we can make here 20, well, let's say here 40 pixels. How much you want to do that, that depends on yourself. You can do it later on. Right now we have this. So that works. So now what I want to do here is I want to go into the X, <coughs> sorry, X scale. And in the X scale, we're going to say here, uh, let's remove the grid. Grid display false. And let's say here as well, the ticks in the ticks object display false. So we don't want any labels as well on this. Uh, not like that like this, save that, refresh, there we are. So now let's move this more to the left side. To do that, I need to use a plugin. Let's say here, um, plugins, bar position. I'm going to control that. And then we're going to say here, constant bar position equals the ID of the bar position. And we're going to say before data sets draw, because we want to reassign the position before we draw the data set that makes sense of course else we cannot adjust it anymore so we're going to say here plugin then we're going to say here uh constant and we can say here ctx um data and the scales and once we did that we can say here equal chart once we did this we can now start to do the following or let's get some values here and basically what we need is the following we're going to say console log we're going to say chart get data set meta index zero this is a built-in functionality of chart js then what i can say here is the data if i do this save that refresh open up developer tab you can see right now we only have one array and it gives us an x position this X position by default will be calculated based on what is the width and how much space is between left and right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this X position and reposition it, give it a new position. So, and we are going to do this with a for each loop. We're going to say here for each. And of course we only have one data point, but if we add more, then it will all work nicely together. So we're going to say here, data point comma index function array expression or sorry function arrow expression it's not an array then what i want to do here well we can just say we have this so we can say here the data point dot x will be equal to 10 pixels if i save this refresh you can see it's readjust itself automatically so what we need to do next, of course, is define the width of it. Luckily, we have access to that as well in the bar elements. Let's go here. You can see here X equals 10, but the width is still 400 pixels. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to say here data point width. And let's say the width will be also 10 pixels. Save that, refresh. Now it's outside of the area because it's at the left side so let's give this 100 and you will see it pop up somewhere there we are so if you want to know we want to start somewhere at the left plus maybe 20 pixels what i can do here is get the chart area 
And I'm going to say left, so we know what's the left position. And what I want to do then is a left plus uh, 10 pixels, say refresh. There we are. So we are very close to the position here. Not really the best one, maybe say less 25 pixels. That's better. So what we need to do next is, well, let's put in another value just to test. Say comma, and then we say 10. If I save this, refresh. Now it's stacked on top of each other. Why? It has the same position. Because here we need to play around with it. So what I want to do here, I'm going to say this will be multiplied by index, which makes sense. We start with zero and then here multiplied by index, save. Uh, oh no, sorry. We don't want that to be adjusted. Save, refresh. There we are. And then maybe we can say here plus 25 plus multiply by index. There we are. Now we have that. What I want to do next is, of course, you can see a Monday. And this is undefined because we have no other label. So we say here Tuesday, which is a string value, save, refresh. What I would like to do now is get this Monday label underneath and the Tuesday label at the bottom as well. So how do we do this? Well, we have here the coordinates, but I removed the grid or the ticks before. And I did this because I have no way to access positioning of our tick labels so i'm going to create my own tick labels based on the logic we have here and what i can do here is the following well let's see can we find the access of the data of the labels if we click here do i see anything yes do i see monday by any chance and i don't see anything here so what i'm going to do because we have the index and we have the data object we can start to create our text so what i'm going to do here ctx dot and then we're going to say here font we're going to say here 12 pixels maybe or let's say bold 12 or maybe 10 pixels because it's quite tight then we say here sans serif once we did this i'm going to say here ctx dot fill style for the color let's make it gray then i'm going to say here ctx dot fill text and the text here will be whatever the text is the X and Y position. Well, in this case, we need a few things. We need to be here at the bottom. And I guess we could get that from the chart area here by saying bottom. That is the bottom. So what I can say here for the Y will be bottom, but probably we have to push it a little bit more down, but we'll see later on. The X position is basically this logic here. The text here, let's do test first. And afterwards, we're going to work on that. Let's save that, refresh. There we are. We can put it at the bottom. Of course, if you have longer one, you might have to consider rotation. I will skip that for now because that's a bit more complicated. So what I'm going to do here, the text, I'm just going to say here, I want to grab the data. We're going to get this dot data sets index zero dot. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. That is not what I want. I want the data dot label. If you're wondering why data dot labels with an S. That's why. And then here the index. Let's save that. Refresh. There we are. Let's push this down more. So we're going to say here ctx uh, text align. Let's make this center. That's the first step. Save. There we are. And let's push that down. How many pixels? Well, it depends. We know this is about 10 pixels in font size. So we could give this with the bottom. We can say a plus five pixels, but I think you can give it 10 pixels. So we have some padding between there. So if we refresh, there we are. I think that looks quite nice. So let's start another one here, comma, and let's say here uh, 22, and this will be Wednesday. It's a string, save, and there we are. That's it.